We have a karmic week full of planetary transits. In this week's astrology, a rare alignment between Jupiter and Saturn will take place, giving us a nudge needed to work on areas of our life that's become out of sort. There's a full moon in Aquarius, causing us to examine where we're making progress in our life. Virgo season is starting this week, giving us the urge to get back on our regimen. And it's a busy week for the Sun, Mercury, and Venus transits, enunciating issues with ego, socializing, romance, and money. Since this is such a dynamic week, the vibes on the graph are absolutely reflective of that. There's a smidge of social energy on the 19th, mental tones, emotional sensitivity, and solitude. Due to this odd mix we have going on this week, our moods are going to fluctuate, causing us to feel like walking contradictions. With all this dynamic energy, it's no wonder that solitude's continuing into the 21st. So we're going to have our moments where we need space to ourselves. We need time to think. We need time to process what's going on with us. We need time to reflect. And so the urge to have our own space and personal time is really going to be vital through this week. And a lot of this energy is going to be present with us throughout this week. And we'll be feeling a lot of this stuff for a bit since we're dealing with some outer planet transits and they don't go away within three days or anything like that. However, by the time we get to the weekend, around up until about the 24th, romance is showing up on the graph. Mental vibes will be present again, along with some good luck energy and of course, more solitude, of course. With this week being the way it is, we're going to be in the mood for some social social fun. Even though with that solitude there, we have some Mercury transits going on over the weekend that support socializing. And so it may be a time to mend fences and it may be a time just to let our hair down and just try and shake off some of the stuff from this week. So yeah, we definitely got a transformative week for sure as we've had actually throughout the whole entire month of August. Let's look at these next bunch of days and see what we can expect. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps this channel grow. Also, if you're looking for a natal chart reading or intuitive coaching, the links will be in the description box below. And if you'd like to support the work of this channel, you could do so by buying me a fresh cup of coffee. The link will be in the description box below as well. So yeah, this month has had a huge karmic tone to it, especially once we got to the middle part of August. We've got Mercury retrograde going on. We have Yod. We have T-squared. And a bunch of outer planet activity that we typically don't get. On top of that, Uranus is stationing through this month as well. So it makes for a dynamic month. Also, we've got that full moon in Aquarius that's happening on the same day as the square. And so that full moon is charged up. There's already a podcast out for that. And the video will be up shortly if it's not already up, which it should be by this point that you guys are seeing this on YouTube. But there's a lot going on and it makes for a bitey time. It makes for a really karmic time. Also this month, Pluto's going right back into Capricorn on top of that as well with Uranus retrograde going on. And again, a a lot of stuff has been happening. But concerning this Jupiter-Saturn square, these energies have been mounting for a while. They've been brewing for over a week, I would say about give or take a good 10 days or so. Jupiter is already being simulated. It was being simulated by Mars last week. Jupiter is locked in the sesquic quadrate with Pluto. While it's been applying to this square to Saturn, as well as Mars making that square to Saturn last week. So there's been a lot of activation within this energy. And with all of this stuff compounded, this is exactly why that Mars-Jupiter conjunction was not like the typical ones that we've had before. The one in Aries in 2022 was pretty gnarly as well. It had its good things as it does, but it had its harsh thing. But this one is being activated by rare alignments. Jupiter and Saturn don't make squares with each other very often. It's not like the moon square Venus or even the sun making a square to Mars, which happens a couple of times a year. The last time we had a Jupiter-Saturn square was on May 26th of 2016. And at that point in time, it was taking place in Virgo and Sagittarius. Jupiter was in Virgo and Saturn happened to be in Sagittarius at that time. And yet again, we have a square happening in mutable energy. This one's taking place with Jupiter in Gemini and Saturn in Pisces. So having a mutable square like this is marking a period where we need to wrap things up and make way for something better. Make way for something new and fresh. And even though this is an opening square in the Jupiter-Saturn cycle, there is some finality energy to it with it being a mutable square, especially with the last sign of the zodiac Pisces. Of course, as an opening square, it does lead to fresh starts once we get everything in order. And mainly with energy like this, we're working with the energetic clashes that are going on within us and within society. Combining the contrasting qualities of Saturn's long-term focus and excessive caution with Jupiter's spontaneous and overly confident approach requires a lot of balance. And so energy like this can really feel like you're being pulled in so many 
many different directions for that reason. And on a personal level, this is gonna be a time to examine our fear of making big moves or what's keeping us small. Since these energies have been mounting over the last few weeks, it could bring on this feeling of two conflicting mindsets where we feel pulled in opposite directions, which is why it's a period to proceed cautiously and avoid rushing into decisions because it can result in complications with energy like this. Because of the duality this creates, we can experience moments where we're just overly frustrated, where we feel like we're on pins and needles, where we feel like we need to just take action. And also we could feel like we're fluctuating from one extreme to another, especially when it comes down to our perspectives. Another way this contrasting energy can show up is where we vacillate through avoidance and minimization, but also having moments where we're blowing things out of proportion the next. So we need to find a happy medium when it comes down to how we react to situations, because that's one of the symptoms of this energy and we could see playing out personally, we'll be seeing it playing out on a world stage, but it's one of those things that we're really going to have to recognize so we can get it in check and not have these types of mood swings and moments. Energy like this, I would say mostly collectively, but this could also be a personal thing as well. We may have some splitting perspectives when it comes down to tradition versus modernity. Again, I feel like more of that plays out collectively. It could play out in our own lives as well, especially in relational situations or other things that we're trying to figure out in terms of our goals, profession, and what type of path we're trying to be on. But one of the things with that is it can help us zero in on where we're thinking unrealistically, especially when it comes down to old beliefs, old structures, outdated principles, opinions, theologies, and other forms of faith that aren't necessarily working for us anymore. And so this could be a period of adjusting our beliefs and trying to make progress in those areas and have more of an open mind if we've been closed off or if we've been too Jupiterian in our philosophies, coming to a place where we get more grounded and realistic and are looking at the facts of a situation. Truly with a transit like this, it's a cycle to become more aware of our self-imposed limitations or why obstacles keep coming up in our lives. So we could be examining where we're holding ourselves back or where maybe we've been a little bit too impulsive and it's causing us to trip over our shoes. It's causing us to have a lot of mishaps and stuff. So it shows us where we need balance in those areas. With both of these situations, the self-imposed limitations and the obstacles, it can show us where we're hyper-focusing on if we're on the wrong path or if the journey that we're taking currently is gonna pay off later. So this can give us a nudge needed to make the alterations we need to make and allow growth, but also limit things that waste our time so we're not putting ourselves in the position of walking the wrong path or climbing the wrong mountain because we're truly sick of being stuck. This can also point us in the direction of looking at our finances. So on a financial level, this long phase can help us be more mindful of our spending habits. Sometimes energy like this is about vacillating in terms of our attitudes with money. This can cause us to examine if we're materially obsessed or if we're just not tied to money at all. In other words, situations where we just don't necessarily care about material worth or anything like that. There needs to be a balance with both of those things. I know sometimes from the spiritual side, you know, a lot of focuses don't focus on material things, which that should not be your number one focus. We have to have goals with everything in life, but there needs to be a balance too at the same time when it comes down to having constructive monetary goals and killing a lot of your money noise on both ends. But overall, on a personal level, this almost year-long phase is going to be about integrating both sides of us and trying to make some sort of balance happen. So this is a time to evaluate what's working, what's not working, what no longer serves you, what, you know, old beliefs or structures need to fall off in your life. We have a really long phase that's going to be lasting till June when we get that last transit of the Jupiter-Saturn square. So this is not going anywhere just because August is coming to a close. So on a collective level, this energy is going to still be with us as well. And so collectively, how this energy is going to manifest will feel like a prolonged phase of energetic clash. So societally, this is going to be a period of watching a lot of opposition. Not that we haven't been seeing that going on on the world stage, but it's going to feel more keyed up than it typically is with energy like this. It could be a time of working on updating old structures that need an overhaul, keeping things that work because they still have their place, but this won't happen without a bunch of conflict. When I was saying tradition versus modernity earlier, that feels more collective than anything else. I'm not saying it can't pop up in a personal life situation, but we're definitely going to see a lot of that. We've been seeing a lot of that mounting for quite a while anyway. So there's going to be a lot of tug of war when it comes down to that kind of stuff with people. Other ways this energy can show up is making repairs to poor decisions on all 
levels. This could include monetary issues. And of course that has to deal with world finances and things like that. There can be issues when it comes down to education and coming to a clashing viewpoint about how to go about that. Issues with morality, scenarios about unappealing laws and proposals and other rules that just no longer work. Situations with religion, beliefs, and faith can be another energetic clash that we're seeing within this energy where there's a lot of opposites in terms of opposing sides on each of these views or situations. With Jupiter being in Gemini, this could also be a time of salacious gossip, some intentionality about distorting facts, issues with communications, issues with media, and just overall information getting blown out of portion. With the Piscean side of this, the disenchantment of society can be felt harshly. Not that this energy hasn't been brewing for some time. It's definitely going to be more present and prominent though with this ongoing square going on until June of 2025. So a lot of that is going to come to the forefront. But this is a time of avoiding extremes if possible, if you have the luxury to. Trying to find some sort of harmonious middle ground if possible and slowly taking some calculated risks to ensure that you're getting the best results during this time because this energy in itself can be really messy and edgy all at once because we're dealing with opposing energies that want different things and have different agendas. And so integration and walking the middle path is going to be your best bet during this time period if possible. The mutable modality will be more affected by this alignment than others. So anyone with Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, or Pisces placements between 10 to 20 degrees of these energies will feel this more than others. And so if you have placements or chart points in any of those signs, this is definitely going to be more impactful and important to you. It's important on a collective level as well, even if you aren't feeling this, but in your own personal chart, it'll have a little bit more potency. We'll see these energies play out two more times. The next time on December 24th, happy Christmas Eve, and on June 15th of 2025, once this square is completed. So just when you thought it was done talking about this Saturn-Jupiter situation, Venus is also involved in this mix as well. On top of that, we've got the full moon happening on that same day. So that just kicks this up a notch. Also a yod pattern with Pluto, which is connected to Jupiter in that square. So with the Venus situation, we've got a bunch of complicated alignments and a lot of it is working on unconstructive relationship situations. More so, there's a T-square going on with Venus. Venus is squaring Mars. Venus is squaring Jupiter, which are both in a separating conjunction, while Mars and Jupiter are square to Saturn. And so this is forming a T-square with Jupiter at the base and Mars loosely. Because of this, it can be a time where we feel more called than typical to look at our relationship and money patterns. And over this period, we'll become more aware of patterns such as coldness in relationships, jealousy, pettiness, dramatic behavior, contention and close unions can also be a problem. It could be a time where we're called to work on our self-esteem and our self-worth and what we value or learning to value ourselves overall. And this can also show up as a bunch of entire entitlement within our relationships. On top of that, during this time, Venus is making a quincunx with Chiron. And so with situations like this and it being a quincunx, it can call to our awareness where we lack awareness when it comes down to our behavior in love life situations and also our finances and also our close unions that are platonic. Chiron energy is about working on ongoing themes in our lives that require our attention and need some healing. And so with this, it could be a time where it's coming to our awareness that we need to check these things because our unconstructive habits regarding our relationships of all kinds and also our financial spending or what we're doing professionally needs to be tweaked and dialed back in. The 19th continues with the Yod pattern and this time it's involving the Sun, Mercury, Neptune, and Pluto. And so this could lead to a day where mental fog is prevalent. At the same time, we may have moments of clarity. And the reason why we might have moments of clarity despite this yacht involving two planets that create a lot of issues concerning Pluto and Neptune, we have a Mercury Cassini going on at that same time. And Mercury Cassinis are periods where we have a moment of clarity, especially during the retrogrades. And so this may be a time where we're going back on someone that might have eluded us for a while and we're coming to a realization of that. So that's the bright side 
side of this energy. Otherwise, it can have a bit of conflicting things, especially when it comes down to deceptive behavior, overpowering personalities, vacillating between having no self-esteem to having an ego that's out in the quasars. And so this is why we were seeing such conflicting energy on the graph, because you got the Cassini, which is a bright spot, but then you've got this dark cloud kind of over it. And so it can be a day where we feel a little confused more than typical, where, yeah, we might be having a eureka moment, but at the same time, there's other things that are clouding our judgment. So try to go slow because it is one sloppy Monday. But on to the bright side of this week. Once we get to the 22nd, Virgo season begins. Happy birthday to all the Virgos out here and welcome to the Virgo season of 2024. As a matter of fact, this is the sign that's going to wrap up summer. All of the mutable signs wrap up the seasons and Virgo's job is to wrap up the summertime as it is the last zodiac sign for this season. So it's a time to make sure our lives is passing the white glove test before we get to the autumn. And with that, as we leave the bold, expressive party vibes of Leo, we're changing to a more practical and down to earth methodology. A sign like Virgo encourages us to roll up our sleeves, clean up what's unsightly, and place some focus on others instead of being self-absorbed. In other words, our ego gains a boost from being useful, and under this influence, we'll gain a considerable boost from enhancing things, situations, and being of service to the people around us. This is what gives us a nice confident boost when the sun is in Virgo. This is a sign about self-improvement rather than self-aggrandizement, which is why our sense of self gets tied to helping others, but also making the most of our time and not being wasteful. So we get fulfillment from those things and it tends to help us in terms of feeling more self-assured. So this could be a phase where we're striving to be the best versions of ourselves and making some specific tweaks to something in terms of whatever is out of balance for us and which could be our regimen. It could be the fact that our schedule has been thrown off or other things that we've been trying to keep neat and tidy have became unsightly. Our consciousness just becomes more aware that we're in need of a healthy routine. And it's interesting and I always like this fact about when we get to Virgo season, but it comes right after Cancer and Leo season, which is a period where we really let loose. I know I keep saying summer and it's because I come from a Northern Hemisphere perspective, but this also relates to the Southern Hemisphere as well, where you guys had your winter time and that's also another time where we go off the rails. So Virgo season comes in at the nick of time to help us get back on our routines, help us get back on track when it comes down to our personal growth journey, our healing journey, and anything to do with health related stuff. So by the time we get to this season, we're realizing we may need to clear our system out. A transition into a self-improving sign gives us the urge to clean our act up and really dial it back again if we've really been off the rails this season. Continuing with improvement, this may be a period where we're making tweaks to our home as well. Well, Virgo is about getting on a schedule and our daily rituals and our daily rituals, sure, they involve going to work and all that other stuff, but also doing stuff within our homes. So this could be a time to get more organized, make the place more spotless, get more organized for work as well and getting back on track when it comes down to anything to do with your profession, starting to prep your home for the next season and slowly putting away the clothes that aren't necessarily weather appropriate anymore in preparation for something more suitable. And so it's a time to really just get more pristine when it comes down to our home and anything to do with ourselves as well and getting organized for work. With this energy and this daily ritual sort of vibe, it could be a time when we start really focusing on our well-being as well. So if you lost sight of things, this is a time to recalibrate and get back in tune with your mind-body connection. And what's great about this too is this energy helps us focus on the fine details of things. So we can really get down to the nitty gritty of something and zero in on the little things that really need a tweaking and need to be fine-tuned for us because maybe we just didn't have the time to focus on those little things and the little things things add up in this energy. The little things add up, period. So it could help us examine how something has slowly gotten off track and what we can do to tweak it and make it better. Of course, there's a lower vibration to this, as there is any time a planet changes signs, and this is no different even if it's all about self-improvement. That tends to be the problem in this energy. We need to find a good balance because there can be an urge to over-improve more than usual. And so we can find ourselves getting stressed out and over-analyzing something, 
or trying to over improve or perfect something that's already good enough and doesn't need any more tweaking, we need to be careful and mindful of that because it could lead to stress related issues and just falling into that analysis paralysis thing, but also not taking action on something because we don't feel like it's 110% when again, perfection gets in the way of good enough and sometimes 95% is good, sometimes 90% is good. Perfection is a lie and so that's something else we need to be aware of within this energy. We also need to be aware of coldness. This is a mercury ruled sign and can be very cerebral and so sometimes a lack of emotion is more present than typical and with some of that coldness and the mercurial energy that this sign operates under, it could be a time where we're being too critical and very robotic in our responses. So try to find the most constructive way possible when it comes down to some of these energies in the sign because all the good qualities are absolutely useful for us. Then once we get to the 23rd, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Chiron are going to be mingling with one another. Over the weekend, we've got a plethora of Mercury transits and a few things going on with Mars. As a matter of fact, Mars and Mercury are playing together in harmony and so they're both connecting to Chiron in a harmonious way. The only alignment that is a little bit sus is the Mercury semi-sextile to Venus situation. For being a harsh alignment, it's not one of the worst harsh alignments. It just creates issues when it comes down to communication, especially when it comes down to getting instant validation. And so it could be a time of getting irritated or acting irrationally if we're not getting complimented immediately. And this can translate into something on social media or sending a text to someone and not hearing something back or not hearing the words that you want to hear back right away. So it creates complications in that sort of way. However, with this Mercury, Mars, Chiron situation, it could be a time of mending fences with others. It could be a time of healing our inner dialogue. It could be a time of actually coming up with goals and action plans that are going to help us in the long run and improve our lives in terms of going on a healing journey. But also, it can get us in a headspace where we're just wanting to have fun. We're wanting to socialize. We're needing adventure. We're craving banter, witty banter, active and lively banter. And after after a week like we've had, this could be a time of, again, mending fences with that Chiron energy or having a conversation where you're encouraging someone or someone else is just giving you a much needed pep talk. And so we welcome this energy and the weekend's energy. Although, again, we'll still be feeling that Jupiter-Saturn situation with jupiter sesquiquadri pluto and Mars finally going upon its merry way and getting off of Jupiter and Saturn and stuff. So at least we have some mitigating factors and Virgo season coming into play at the end of the week because it'll really help soften the energies, especially after having one of the most messiest, sloppiest Mondays ever, which was indeed a cosmic clusterfuck. So I hope you all have the best and constructive week ever later and see you in the next episode.